Good at joining us this morning, NEC Director Lael Brainerd joins us. Uh, Lael, it's great to have you back. I want to read you something out of BMO this morning, speaking of, to Steve's point. Uh, Powell, quote, could not have asked for a better present. Consumers are spending, the economy is rolling along, creating jobs, lifting incomes, and yet inflation is simmering down nicely. The end game turning out better than the Fed or nearly anyone could have imagined at the beginning of the year. I assume that's how you see it as well. Absolutely. Uh, we're closing out the year with inflation on a six-month basis at 2%. That's the pre-pandemic benchmark. That's a very significant milestone. And with the 2023 close, it's worth noting just how much progress we've seen. Not only has inflation come down faster than even the most optimistic forecast, but growth is very resilient and employment is very strong. Just thinking back to a year ago, that consensus was we couldn't get to where we are today on inflation without a spike in unemployment and a recession. But the unemployment rate's been below 4% for 22 months running now. And we got more data today and yesterday confirming economic growth is robust. And if you look at after-tax income growth for Americans, 3.7% this year, that's after adjusting for inflation. So yes, a good, a good year for the American worker, the American economy. Now we're graduating into a moment where, for example, the Fed chair, uh, Austin Goolsby, are beginning to talk about paying more attention to unemployment. Uh, I'm, I'm beginning to see some takes on this morning's data that the Fed is now at risk of an inflation undershoot by uh, late 24. How much are you focusing on that? Well, uh, just let's pause there for a second. Who would have thought that we would have made this much progress on inflation, inflation running at 2%, that benchmark on a six-month basis, and the uh, labor market looking quite balanced. We've seen a surge in people coming back into the labor market. That's also something that nobody was predicting. Remember when people were talking about the great resignation? Instead, we've seen a strong labor market bringing people back in, highest working age participation rate. And for uh, individual Americans, uh, they really are seeing prices coming down, whether it's uh, gas, uh, gallons of gas is now close to $3, a big reduction over the course of the year, a gallon of milk, uh, chicken in the grocery stores, uh, eggs, toys. I mean, you look across the board and you're actually seeing prices coming down over the year. Director Brainerd, it's, it's Scott. It's nice to have you on the show. If, if growth is resilient, inflation is down, jobs are good, incomes are strong, consumer sentiment is up, how concerning is it to you that the president's approval rating remains so incredibly low and his handling of the economy is judged by the same surveys to be poor. Look, when I talk to the president, what he wants to know always is, what do these good economic statistics mean for Americans? Does it mean they have more breathing room at the end of the month? And I think now we can definitively say the answer to that is yes. If you look over the course of his presidency, the Joint Economic Committee is estimating that people have $3,500 more per year to spend even after adjusting for the kinds of um, uh, purchases that they uh, would have made um, and price changes there. Uh, wealth is up 37 uh, percent. We are seeing across the board, you think about 401ks, people are seeing uh, gains. And that takes a while, given just how much Americans have been through. But I think it's starting to really take shape. And you saw that in the jump in consumer sentiment this morning, which was so good to see.